In early August, the leader of the Argentine human rights group Grandmothers of Plaza de Macho announced that the 114th missing grandchild was found using DNA evidence. The children, now in their late 30s, were kidnapped during the Argentine dictatorship in which an estimated 10,000 to 30,000 people were murdered by the government. Although the dictatorship ended more than 30 years ago, the wounds still run deep in Argentina's history. The Argentine dictatorship that took place between 1976 and 1983 was one of several dictatorships in the southern cone of Latin America that were characterized by the use of heavy-handed tactics including torture and disappearance against people accused of being dissidents. I guess it was a classic of a clash between the left and the right that you could possibly have, very extremist views in the country. And, you know, there was, it was on all, all sorts of levels, workers' rights, uh, civil rights. This is a very harsh dictatorship where there was no space for political participation. Uh, political parties were not allowed. They uh, start uh, closing the Congress, uh, censoring people, arresting anyone who was supposed to be uh, connected uh, to the left, anyone who was against the new government. The military, uh, after they had jailed a number of dissidents, uh, most times illegally, without giving any news about their whereabouts, without notifying their families about their whereabouts, without allowing them to have a lawyer, decided to get rid of them. The dictatorship wanted the dissidents to end. And the best way to make the dissidents end is to disappear the dissidents and that left their children. Well, if they brought those children into the dictatorship, if they brought them in and placed them with families that were supportive of the dictatorship, or in fact were part of the dictatorship, government officials, uh, legislators, uh, people who were supportive of uh, the regime, they would then breed, so to speak, or raise or rear a new generation of supporters. After the beginning of the military junta, there emerged a movement of mothers who started to demand information about the whereabouts of their kids. They initially went one by one to all kinds of official institutions hoping to learn something about their loved ones. They went to military barracks, they went to police stations. They even went to the Ministry of Justice or the Ministry of War hoping to learn something about their loved ones. Little by little they came together and they started to march in the central square of Buenos Aires, the so-called Plaza de Mayo. They allowed them because they thought that they were harmless. They thought that these were maybe some crazy ladies who were not going to cause any trouble. So they, what they did is they allowed them to walk around the plaza with the pictures. This movement started as an insignificant, if you will, movement of, again, relatives, mothers and grandmothers, and little by little gained so much uh, stature, so much importance, that it actually became a true threat. So that was very surprising. It was, they never expected that this movement was gonna become so powerful. And, uh, and, uh, and what happened is little by little, they, were, they became more and more and more and uh, they were uh, one of the major political groups uh, in, in terms of the resistance against the dictatorship. During and after the dictatorship, they indeed uh, carried out extensive work and very successful and professional work uh, to find out information, even using DNA evidence to link uh, missing uh, people, uh, both kids and grandkids, to families. Uh, so uh, they really uh, helped um, the human rights cause because they were very organized and they are the ones who were the pioneers in all these investigations. It made a tremendous difference when you compare this country to, say, Chile, Uruguay or Brazil because in those countries there were no similar organizations, in part because the amount uh, of disappear was much less significant. And the movement, again, that started as, a, as, as, as the cry of, of a half dozen, a dozen mothers and grandmothers became just a worldwide uh, phenomenon. 
One of the most important contributions of movements such as the Mothers of Plaza de Mayo or the Grandmothers of Plaza de Mayo is to memory. Memory means truth. Memory means not forgetting the past. Memory means the possibility of one day accomplishing, achieving something that is very difficult in societies that have gone through this type of situation, which is reconciliation and transitional justice. And I think that's what their conviction is, is that they need truth in order to feel that they have left the past uh, behind, not because they have forgot it, but because precisely right, thanks to, the knowing, to, to knowing the truth, they can come to terms with the past. So I think that that is the main contribution. It's a contribution to historical memory. They have been tremendously powerful in not only um, changing the way and moderating the way that Argentina has ruled, but also perhaps in, uh, in improving the worldview of Argentina, uh, which had been terribly, terribly maligned. If you look at the, the grandmas, if you look at the, the abuelas, and how they were sort of involved in this from you know the beginning that this that they felt that this burden fell on them and then as the as the success built and the publicity built and all of that I think definitely you see a, a sort of a cleansing or a maturation of, of a country. I think there are still open wounds uh, in place but uh, the, the finding of all these kids, who are not kids anymore, they're adults, I think that helps uh, for, for this country who has suffered so much to know that at least there's some truth and, and possible reconciliation, because at least they're finding the truth. When this last kid, the 114th kid, was found that is an adult uh, recently, I think it was a, uh, it was a victory. Uh, I think it was a joy to the whole country to know that at least these kids are finding who their real families are.